What do you feel when you hear these songs? These people got me, got me questioning. Where is the love? Tonight's gonna be a good night. Pump it louder. Pump it louder. Pump it louder. When I listen to the Black Eyed Peas, I personally feel pleasantly nostalgic to the good old times. At one point, this group was solid at the top of the Billboard charts, winning one award after the other. The Black Eyed Peas! Black Eyed Peas! The Black Eyed Peas! And then there was the beautiful Fergie with the unmatched vocals. It's personal, myself and I. Unfortunately, she left the group in 2011. In this video, we will discuss why she left and we will also talk about the history of the Black Eyed Peas and what they're up to now. It probably seems to you that the success of the group came about very quickly, as if they just released their breakthrough album in 2003 and things took off right away with crazy sales, a bunch of awards, and so on and so forth. However, the truth is far from that. Everything started way back in 1988. Apple Diap, whose real name is Alan Pineda Lindo, was born in the Philippines. He was looked after by adoptive parents from an early age, and he moved to the US. And the first person he met there was William Adams, better known under the alias of Will I Am. He was looking at me like this exotic animal, like, like <laughs> you're from the Philippines? They were quick to find common grounds to bond over. They had shared views and interests, so they formed a dance group called Tribal Nation. The guys loved break dancing. They later moved on to making music, and got themselves a new name for the group, the Atban Clan. There, they were joined by Mookie Mood and DJ Motivate. They gained popularity amongst the local rap and breakdance scenes. Three years later, in 1992, the young musicians signed a contract with the label company Ruthless Records and made their debut as a featured artist on the track Merry Motherfucking Xmas, a song from one of Easy es EPs. Soon after, the group recorded their debut album, Grassroots, which was set to release on October 6, 1994. The album was never released, as Easy e passed away from AIDS in 1995. The group decided to make some changes to their group, as they were dropped from Ruthless Records in 1995. In the same year of 1995, Will I Am, Apple the App, DJ Motivate, and Dante Santiago formed a new group named Black Eyed Pods, later renamed to Black Eyed Peas. Taboo met William in a nightclub, and later William asked him to join them. Taboo replaced Mookie Mook as he went to pursue a career with his new band, Burning Star. Also, Kim Hill joined the group as the lead female vocalist. In 1998, they were noticed by the label company Interscope, and the group finally released their debut album called Behind the Front. One of the singles from the album, Joints and Jam, went on to reach number 53 on the UK Billboard charts. After a critically acclaimed album, the group released their second album, Bridging the Gap. However, even though their work was highly praised by music critics, their music did not receive enough attention, and their albums were at lower spots on the Billboard charts. Things did not go as smoothly as they had wanted it. In addition to all that, while producing Bridging the Gap, Kim Hill left the band. In an interview with the New York Times, she said that she left because she felt its growing fame put pressure on her to be over-sexualized. You want me? to grind on Will I Am in a bathing suit. That was being asked of me, never by the guys. That was happening as a, from an executive level. In 2002, the group began to look for a replacement for Kim Hill. The group wanted Nicole Scherzinger to join the group, but her band didn't allow it due to her contract status. So the guy settled for Fergie. Before she joined the Black Eyed Peas, Fergie was already a member of the Wild Orchid group. <laughs> The group released two albums, and right around when they finished the third one, their record label forbade them from releasing it, and in 2001, she left the group. 
At that time, Fergie became addicted to illegal substances. The reason why she started using is extremely strange. She just could not tell the members of the group that she wanted to record a solo album. So she started using. So you tried instead. So hey, <laughs> why not try some meth? Other than say what needs to be ah! said, I think I'll take <laughs> Yes, right? didn't know how to deal. The drugs brought her so much pleasure, but then it all turned into a serious nightmare. She weighed 90 pounds, so she started lying to her friends, claiming that she was struggling with bulimia. But in the end, she just started losing her mind and began hallucinating. It seemed to her that the FBI was after her when she was in church. And when she realized that no one was after her, she stopped engaging in self-destructive activities and returned to music. She met the Black Eyed Peas. At the beginning, she was invited to just record a female vocal segment in the track Shut Up. Then, the girl was asked to take part in recording a few more songs. By the end of it all, Fergie became a full-fledged member of the group. According to the words of the other musicians, her arrival made the team more whole and coherent. The addition of a charming woman in the group brought even more benefits. The managers of record labels thought that the presence of a beautiful woman in the team will have a totally positive effect on their image as well as on their album sales, even though she was disliked at first. Who is this terrible person that has joined the Black Eyed Peas? She's ruining it. She is awful. Did they she, really say that? Oh, people no, would say. You know what? I yeah. remember that because that's a difficult Goodness thing. Gracious. When there's a group that's established and then Absolutely. someone comes in and they're like, it's yeah. a white girl. You know, Absolutely. Joining a group that's like a hip hop urban group that Absol is going to draw some criticism. Uh, yeah. And it was like she's masterminding their, their pop crossover, ruining the... The tragic events of September 11, 2001 became a push for the continuation of their campaigns of capturing the hearts of new listeners from around the world. From the very beginning, they sought to use their music to bring different cultures and music ideas together. The musicians understood that it was time to speak up and call for unity. Will I Am wrote the song Where Is The Love. Apple D App and Taboo also heard the track and were able to write similar lyrics over it. Justin Timberlake was introduced to the group by Taboo and got a chance to hear the track that Will I Am created. Impressed with the music, Timberlake helped write and sing the chorus. This track became the newly formed group's first single, and they will continue to touch upon such social topics in the future. And only a week later, the album Elefunk was released, in which the previously mentioned track Shut Up and also, Let's Get It Started became the hits of the album. Let's get it started. Let's get it started in here. For the first time ever, the guys felt that their bosses from the record labels were truly supporting them. The producers and managers finally believed in the perspective of the Black Eyed Peas. Even though many claim that Fergie's arrival saved the group, the performer believes otherwise, claiming that the group saved her. This is what she had to say about it. It is best that the success of the hit song, Where Is The Love, is attributed to others. After all, Timberlake took part in it. I was merely icing on the cake. In 2005, The Bunch released their next album under the name Monkey Business. This record delighted us with a huge number of legendary hits. Also, Fergie didn't forget about her lifelong dream, which was to create a solo album. She finally got to make it happen. The release, called Fergie as the Duchess, became iconic. Besides her musical abilities, I'd like to point out her athletic ability. The group's next album, under the name The End, was more successful than the ones before it, even despite the fact that they experimented around with new sounds. Five tracks made it to the top 10 of the Billboard Hot 100 chart. Tonight's gonna be a good night. 
Upon its release, The End received mixed to positive reviews from music critics who described it as containing more anthemic and inspirational songs in the group's bid to appeal to a new generation of music listeners. You could hear its impact for years to come. In an interview, Williams spoke out about the secret behind their hit songs. Before making a song, the guys begin by thinking about who the target audience is and where the song will be heard. For example, if they're planning on recording a track fit for clubs, then they have to frequent such spaces and understand which songs appeal to people. Was it the lyric? Was it the, the, the synth? That what is it? You're watching people like react to things and they react to the build now. That's that's the that's the that's the, yeah. that's the thing right now. Yeah. Is builds peaks. That's our next song. Is, is don't stop the party. That's yeah. a further. They always try to blend different cultures and styles, which is exactly why their music happens to be so unique. In 2010, they released a new album called The Beginning, in which Will I Am began actively using auto tune. I just can't get enough. In 2011, the group stated that they wanted to take a break. And of course, there were rumors saying that the group is disbanding. But they denied these rumors and stated that everything is okay between them. Despite that, there were speculations that the group could disband because William started using autotune and Fergie didn't like that. In any case, the disbanding of the group happened because of an initiative from the singer who needed a break to rest from touring. She also wanted to dedicate time to her personal life and devote more time to her private businesses. At that time, she had launched her own shoe collection, founded a wine company, and also released her own perfume line. Will I Am was not only involved with the Black Eyed Peas, he released his own music and collaborated with different artists. Don't wait for luck, dedicate yourself and you go find yourself. Standing in the Hall of Fame. Now, now, rockin' with Will I Am and Britney, bitch. In 2013, Fergie released a soundtrack for the movie The Great Gatsby. A little party never killed nobody. So we gonna dance until we drop. And later on, she planned to release her own album called Double Duchess, advertising for the release with different singles. However, the album was only released in 2017. At the time of the release of this album, the Black Eyed Peas group were also preparing to release their own record. But Fergie did not want to participate in it, as she wanted to be fully focused on her own solo project, and in the same year of 2017, the singer left Interscope Records. All of these gripping pieces of news left people perplexed and created new rumors that there was conflict between the members. However, they denied them anyway. Fergie said that they remain one family, and Will I Am even produced a few tracks from the Double Duchess album. I, I get money all day, baby, like it ain't nothing, nothing, nothing. This album was not able to blow up, just like the one before it. Later, in 2018, she was caught in a scandal because of a failed performance of the National Anthem during the 2018 NBA All-Star Game. Fergie approached it very creatively, and instead of the usual chant, the audience heard a jazz-like interpretation of it. Even during the anthem itself, the camera was capturing the reactions of those in the crowd. Fergie's unique performance was compared to the famous Happy Birthday Mr. President by Marilyn Monroe. She was even accused of being disrespectful towards America. The singer later apologized for the performance. However, online she was already awarded with the award of worst performance of the national anthem in history. It's almost a little disrespectful. If it was any other song, I'd be like, you go Fergie. Holy oh, shit, that's good! Poor Fergie, I feel so bad. After that, it was not the best time for Fergie. For example, her dad, whom she had a very good relationship with, passed away. It was actually him who partnered with her in the establishing of her wine company. Further, things didn't work out with her shoe brand. What was good, however, was that Jack Harlow sampled her vocals for the song First Class, which gave her an excellent reason to return to the scene, and the public was happy to see her. In 
In turn, the group was also not having the easiest time. Taboo was diagnosed with cancer. It all began in 2006 when Taboo broke his tailbone after falling on stage during a performance. After that incident, he began having what he calls crazy back pains. But chalking it up to his tailbone not healing properly, he didn't really think anything of it. The pain started getting stronger and stronger every year. Then, one night in June 2014, upon returning home from a gig, the pain became so severe that Taboo couldn't take it any longer. His wife insisted he go to the hospital. After an MRI, CAT scans, and blood work, Taboo was told the next morning that he had stage two testicular cancer. I remember Apple came to the uh, hospital. He, I just remember him looking like, this is weird to see my boy on a bed that has cancer now. So he was freaked out, Will was freaked out, and then Fergie came to my house. And they couldn't believe that I was going through this. When asked about the hardest challenge he faced during his cancer experience, Taboo says it was the chemotherapy. It left him in excruciating pain and unable to sleep. He admits, there were moments when I wanted to give up and kept me motivated was my wife and my kids and knowing that I could be on that big stage against with my best friends, Will I am and Apple. And thankfully, he did not give up and everything worked out well. He's currently totally healthy. After this difficult time in his life, Taboo wrote a soulful song called The Fight. And I'm gonna survive this right. Everything gonna be all right. Everything gonna be all right. As for the music of the Black Eyed Peas group, they got back together in 2015 with a track called Yesterday. And after Taboo's full recovery, they finally finished the album and published the release called Masters of the Sun Volume 1. It is a political album that addresses social issues such as gun violence, police brutality, race relations, and the effects of social media. The first track on the album is a collaboration with Nas. This collaboration tells us the Black Eyed Peas, for the first time in a very long time, is returning to true hip hop. This is exactly the genre that kickstarted the group's career. There are not many hit songs in this album because of the intensity of the social topics discussed. Therefore, it was no wonder that the sales of this album did not replicate or even come close to those of their previous works. However, the guys were not discouraged by that because they knew they could produce hit songs and they proved it in their next release under the name Translation. The guys began using Latino vibes in their songs. It all began with the soundtrack Ritmo for the movie Bad Boys for Life. And of course, after this success, the guys began to put out one track after the other in that same style. Some songs even had Spanish names. Take, for example, Vida Loca or Mamacita. In their last album today, called Elevation, they wanted to go down the same path and use the same style. However, this release was a disappointment for fans because it was like a compilation of unreleased tracks which didn't make it in the previous album. It is also worth noting that some of the works received a good number of streams. You're probably wondering as to why Fergie did not return to the group keeping in mind that her last album flunked in terms of sales, so it would have made sense for her to return to the group. And this is what William had to say about this. He said that she was focusing on being a mom. I quote, that's a hard job, and that's what she really wants to do, and we're here for her. And she knows how to contact us for a retreat or a breakaway, he said. It's really the way Fergie designed it, so we're respecting her design. We love Fergie, and we don't want anything but awesomeness for her. He added that he and the remaining band members Apple the App and Taboo do try to keep in touch with their now former bandmate. Let's hope that one day we will see them together again on the same stage. As for now, the role of the singer in the group is occupied by the talented J. Ray Soul. I make the boys say. Make the boys say. 
The next video that I want to recommend you watch is about the history of the legendary duo OutKast. Be sure to hit the like button under this video and subscribe to the channel to promote the video. Bye everyone!